Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Imagine how much easier life would be if you could speak different languages. There are thousands of languages around the world. Have you ever thought how many of them you can learn? Being multilingual is a goal so many hope to reach. However, there is a key concern about it. As some languages are spreading, others are vanishing. How some people adapt to learn foreign languages and how others try to preserve their mother tongue are amongst the subjects Learning World tackles this week. We go to Luxembourg, which is one of the examples of a multilingual society. To France, where a Japanese teacher tries to bring her culture to those who are away from home. And to Ireland, where Gaelic, or the Irish language, is in danger of dying. So join me in Dublin. There, even adults are going to school to rediscover the language of their ancestors. Here in this school in the suburbs of Dublin, they teach Gaelic to very young children. They may not speak the language much outside school, but their parents want them to be as bilingual as possible. They are absorbing one language, maybe producing in a different language, but it's that cognitive agility that they have. And when they go on to learn a third language, a fourth language, their, their linguistic, I suppose, um, understanding is much greater than a child who has not learned it. Scientists say that bilingual children excel at creative problem solving. If we ever said something in English, we asked a question in English, the teacher would say it back to us in Irish, and then, that's, then we sort of just pick it up. In this multicultural, multilingual society, Gaelic is offered in schools, but is not obligatory. We're not trying to impose anything on anyone. What we're trying to do is we're trying to draw people in. Um, because we feel that the Irish language is very important, we feel it's very useful, we feel that it's part of us, part of our identity. There are increasing opportunities to learn Gaelic in Ireland, like this school, where after classes, they practice the language in the pub downstairs. There are many languages dying out and struggling, and the, the, the Irish language speakers in Ireland is very, very small. So I felt that it's in danger, and I felt that I have to do something. The Irish are rediscovering their national language in a typically Irish style. From Ireland to Luxembourg, a country that is benefiting from its multilingual society and concentrating on teaching languages in its schools. Let's watch this report from there. In Luxembourg, multilingualism is part of daily life. Surrounded by France, Germany and Belgium, around 40% of the Luxembourg population is of foreign origin. The three official languages are French, German and Luxembourgish. Luxembourg is ranked as the richest country in per capita income in the world. And languages are an essential part of keeping this small country competitive. We're the European country which spends most classroom time on languages. On average, around 25% of teaching time spent on it. The question is how to reconcile language learning with successful learning in other subjects. The Central Technical High School has children of 80 different nationalities. Over 70% of them come from abroad. The children start learning German. In the second year of primary school, French is introduced. And as students progress, French becomes the main language. English is the first foreign language. For new students, it can be overwhelming. The only problem I had in the beginning is that it's very complicated. We have to work hard to learn the language. But afterwards, it's easy. You learn one, then another. It's always like that. 
Quand on voit les petits arriver en septième, ils ne parlent pas un mot. When we see the little children arrive in primary, they don't speak a word. We speak with the hands, with gestures, the eyes, and we see them three or four years later doing an international back and going on to university. And that's thanks to languages. It's wonderful. Even blue-collar workers in Luxembourg speak three or even four languages. I'm convinced the multilingual model is the model of the future. Everyone speaks their mother tongue, but also one or, if possible, two other languages, as Europe and the world becomes more mobile. Some people argue that the multilingual model should be the model of the future. However, this requires adaptation and can be very challenging. Let's see how Minako Nakashima, a Japanese teacher, manages to cope in France. Minako Nakashima has been in France for four years, but she still lives a Japanese routine. She gets up at 5 a.m. and answers her emails while sipping tea that her friends bring from Japan. She catches up on the news, and then she goes off to her teaching job. Minako is head of the Japanese section at the International School in Lyon, France. The difficulty for me is the French education system. Before applying what I've got from the Japanese system, I've got to learn more about the French one. My challenge is how to mix them, taking advantage of positive things from both. This is a state school teaching the normal French state curriculum, except for six hours a week when the pupils do lessons in the language of their international section. La spécificité des établissements internationaux. The unique thing about international schools is simply that they allow children from abroad to maintain their academic skills so that they could go back at any time without interrupting their education. Minako leads a team of four Japanese teachers. There are 52 pupils in the section, and some of them have just arrived from Japan. Exchanges between the international sections are encouraged. School trips, theater, shared activities. It works very well. The children don't just learn French, but exchange it with their languages. And they all learn other foreign languages too. But it's not just learning languages, it's adapting to new cultures too. I was a bit shocked by all the kissing. I never knew which cheek to start on. But now when I arrive at a Japanese airport, there are no kisses. And I find that a bit sad. After school, Minako often goes home and puts her kimono on. She misses Japan, but when she goes back there, she misses France. France is where I'd like to go, but France is far away. Maybe I could get a new suit and travel wherever my feet and the train will take me. As we travel up a mountain pass, I lean against the blue window following my own carefree thoughts of dewy grass shoots unfurling on a May morning. Our episode has ended, but of course it is one of a series to come. So wait for us next week, we will be back with a different subject. And remember, you can watch all our stories online at euronews.net forward slash learning world. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.